Good evening my YouTube viewers, Crystal here. I've made another video because I've done some work and my most recent video what I did was I did a Arabic to Roman numeral converter. Well in this video I'm doing a Roman numeral to Arabic converter and I also did a blog post for the Arabic to Roman numeral converter and I intend to do a blog post for the Roman numeral to Arabic converter and talk about some things in that as well. So it's going to be really fun when I get my blog post you can read that. But until I do the blog post then what I wanted to do was uh, just make a video with a code review and the thing about um, the thing about this Roman numeral to Arabic converter this is at least a 30 year old question and it's probably that question's probably been around for a long time maybe even you know since we've got the first computers you know so I don't know how old that question is. I know the question was posed to me 33 years ago and it was probably an old question then. So because it's an old question and because we have the internet now you can look on the internet and you can get the solution. So I did need to have some inspiration for it because I couldn't think about, I could not think about what I wanted to do. And because I couldn't think about what I wanted to do, I did actually have to get some inspiration. So I can't say this is my own work. It's just a code review. I mean, some of it is my own work. It's an algorithm that I got and I modified. Uh, but basically, um, I had to use somebody else's work. But I think really with regard to this Roman numeral Arabic, converter business. I think that because it's so old there's lots of solutions out there and you just have to select the best solution and since I'm a new programmer it's difficult for me to decide the best thing to do especially when you're dealing with Roman numerals because that's a string. So I did have to rely on the help of other people. So I have to be sure make sure that I cite my sources and I will cite my sources when I come to it. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to take a Roman numerals and we're going to convert them to Arabic and we're going to do that in Python. So Roman numerals are a number system that originated in ancient Rome and remained the usual way of writing numbers throughout Europe well into late Middle Ages. Modern usage employs seven simples, I equals 1, V equals 5, X equals 10, L equals 50, C equals 100, D equals 500, M equals 1000. Roman numerals are a base 10 number system, but instead of a place value notations, they use symbols to represent fixed values. The table below shows how Roman numerals should be written. So we've got how they should be written. So it goes all the way up to 4,000. So really, you can write a Roman numeral for 3,999. So I wrote this program on Google Colab and Google Colab is a free online Jupyter notebook and um, basically it allows you to program online. The good thing about Google Colab is Python and many of the libraries that you will need are already installed on Google Colab. The bad thing about Google Colab is it does not always have the most current upgrade and if you need something that's in an upgrade then you may have to install the upgrade yourself. 
In addition to that, Google Colab does not make backup copies. So if you overwrite some code or something like that, you've lost it. So that is a bad thing about Google Colab. And I did actually have to rewrite my uh, program for 21 for that very reason. Because I wrote it someplace else. I went home. It didn't save it properly. And I lost it. So that's a problem with Google Colab. So the instructions on how to actually convert a Roman numeral to an Arabic numeral are on this, this link right here. And the inspiration for the algorithm is on this link right here. So I've got the instructions and I've got the inspiration. So I am citing my work. So obviously I needed some help because I'm a new programmer. Um, we're dealing with strings now. So strings are a lot more difficult to work with than numbers. So we're having to use a string as a number. So the first thing we did was we had to create a dictionary where M is 1,000, D is 500, C is 100, L is 50, X is 10, V is 5, and I is 1. And then what we do is we make a function. And this function is called Roman 2 Arabic. And that function will take something called a numeral. So answer equals 0. N equals len numeral. For IDX, C, an enumerate numeral. If IDX is less than n minus 1 and numdic c is less than numdic numeral idx plus 1 answer equals answer minus numdic c and now that's not a joke i didn't do that on purpose it just happened to work out that way else answer equals answer plus numdic c and you return your answer. So that's the actual um, function that we use to um, convert from Roman numerals to Arabic. Excuse me, I've been up all day. And now what we're going to do is go to the body of the program. So again equals y while again equals y. So what that does is that allows you to enter numbers into the question, oh, enter numbers into the machine over and over again until you stop. Numeral equals input, enter a Roman numeral to convert, numeral equals numeral dot upper. I put that in there myself to make it to where it doesn't matter whether you use a lowercase or an uppercase, it's automatically going to be an uppercase. Print Roman to Arabic numeral. And then again equals input. Would you like to test another Roman numeral? Yes or no. And then so we've got the information here. So enter a Roman numeral to confer XXXX. So that was 40. Would you like to test another Roman numeral? Yes, and I said X, 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 X. I said 40. Would you like to test another Roman numeral? And I said yes. And then I did X, C, and it was 90. And then would you like to test another Roman numeral? So if you put anything other than yes in that question, then it's automatically going to stop. So because the answer that it wants to see is why. So that completes this very small program, but even though it's a small program, it does cover a lot of really good information, such as this uh, function called enumerate, because it is the function called enumerate that enables um, 
me or the programmer to take a string a Roman numeral and convert it to an Arabic and I know you can't see it because of the um, the uh, screen recorder that I have, but I'm just going to read this to you. The enumerate function assigns an index to each item in an iterable object that can be used to reference the item later. It says, what does enumerate do in Python? It makes it easier to keep track of the content of an iterable object. If you are using enumerate in Python 3 and call print enumerate, you will get an alphanumeric memory reference address instead of a readable list. Enumerate in Python 3 works this way to save memory by not generating a necessary fully fledged list. So enumerate is what is the function that enabled us to convert a Roman numeral to a um, Arabic numeral because you were taking a string, you were taking a letter from the alphabet and you were assigning it a number and then you were doing that in a dictionary. So even though it was a small program, it has lots of information in it, lots of really serious coding in it, and obviously, it's not my work. I can't claim it as being my work. But it's the work of this guy here, H in www.tutorialpoint.com. And the per that's the person who provided the algorithm for this program. Although I did modify it for my own needs. So I think that concludes the code review. If you like my video, please like, subscribe, and share. If you would like to be notified whenever I make a video, please hit the bell button beside the subscribe button and you will receive a notification every time I upload the video. If you like the work I do and you want to support me, then I've got my email address to my PayPal account for donations in the description box down below. The reason why is because I don't have enough uh, subscribers to enable me to monetize. But as soon as I monetize, I will stop asking for donations. And again, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you got something out of it. And I look forward to making more videos for you in the future.